patients who are diagnosed with a problem of hip dysplasia, it, it usually comes as a bit of a shock to them because normally they've been complaining of some low-level discomfort in the groin region, maybe for quite some time, which then gradually builds up. And most of the time, they would attribute this to some minor muscle injury or sort of groin strain of some sort. So when we finally do some x-rays and make some further investigations and the patient gets told that they have a significant underlying anatomical abnormality of their hip, then it does all become a, a bit of a shock that they might then need a more significant procedure to, to deal with that. I was in a lot of pain and was uh, looking for to find out what was wrong with me for quite a few years. I was rapidly losing my mobility. It was that bad and I was eventually diagnosed by Mr. Witt. When the option of having a PR was put on the table, for me it was a, an obvious choice. I think it's helpful to try and illustrate what we do with a periacetabular osteotomy. This is a dysplastic hip where you can see the ball is actually very uncovered by this hip socket. And what we do is we make some uh, cuts around the hip socket. So these are the cuts that we've made around the socket here. And then once we freed the socket from the pelvis itself, we can then start to move it in a better position. So I'll illustrate that. You can see how it moves over and then you can see the new position that we have. The idea is that the mechanics of the hip joint are improved so that the stresses on the uh, area where the hip may be starting to get damaged are lessened. Then we'll hold it there with some long screws um, but as you can see because we've made those cuts that bone now needs to heal before we can let the individual put their full weight through the hip again. In terms of preparing for your surgery, I'd recommend several things. One of the big things I'd recommend is just your general overall uh, physical fitness. Uh, your upper body needs to be very strong because you're going to be walking with crutches for several weeks, at least six weeks. Uh, you're going to be walking partial weight bearing, so putting less weight than you're used to through your operated leg. You need to be strong also in your non-operated leg. That will really help your recovery afterwards. I'd recommend exercising in a hydrotherapy or a normal swimming pool because exercising in water can be much less painful if you're already experiencing symptoms in your hip. Some of the other things that might help with your recovery are practicing some of the exercises which are in the booklet that you will see before your operation. Also practicing how to walk with crutches as well. Never underestimate how hard it is to walk with crutches. It can be much easier to practice with those before your operation, particularly using them on stairs preparation is really key. What I found very helpful was really being informed, knowing what's involved in a surgery. It's impossible not to be nervous, but if I set aside some time for relaxation every day, that was helpful. Instead of sitting and worrying, I was using that nervous energy to practice walking around the house on crutches. And could you tell me your name? I'm an anaesthetist. I'm part of a wide team who will be looking after you. And the number should be 406. So the type of anaesthesia we use is a combination of a general anaesthetic and what's called a spinal anaesthetic. The spinal, which is an injection in your back of some local anaesthetic, which numbs your legs and the lower part of your body. Then I'll pop a drip in your hand and put some routine monitoring on. The general anaesthetic is an injection which makes you fall asleep completely. So for the operation, you'll be completely asleep. Now that we do a periacetabular osteotomy through rather a small incision, the patient has a much more cosmetic scar than used to be possible, and it makes the early recovery a bit easier. But the operation itself is still a, quite a significant procedure. Initially when you wake up, the spinal will still be working so you'll have numb legs. And you'll also notice that there's a tube coming out of the scar in your hip. And that tube allows us to infuse some local anaesthetic to numb the area of the scar. We do that for the first 48 hours after your surgery. When the spinal starts to wear off and the feeling comes back to your legs, we'll use morphine through, with what we call a PCA machine. That's a patient-controlled analgesic machine. So you'll have a, a handset that's about the shape of your hand with a button that you press with your thumb you can give yourself some morphine by pressing the button. If you press it too often, it has a safety mechanism built in so you can't overdose yourself. So you'll have that PCA machine for the first night and then we'll try and move you on to tablets and painkillers to control your pain. So I'm just going to put the board underneath your leg. You'll be seen by a physiotherapist who will come around and teach you the exercises which hopefully you will already be aware of. I want you to tighten your thigh muscle and push the knee down into the bed. 
We're going to do that five times. Within your stay, we'll be expecting you to complete them every day as much as you feel comfortable to do. Tighten the thigh muscle to lift your heel up off the bed and to straighten the leg. The physiotherapist will also then help That's you to one. get out of bed and hopefully get you moving. Taking regular medication will allow you to then spend as much time as you feel comfortable sitting. This will aid improving your blood pressure and improve the movement in your hip and therefore hopefully speed up your recovery to going home. Patients will usually be in hospital around five days. It depends very much on the individual case. There are three specific goals that you need to achieve before you can go home. Those are to be independent with your exercises, to be independently walking with your crutches safely and to be able to use the stairs with your crutches independently. After surgery for hip dysplasia, when patients have had a periacetabular osteotomy, there's quite a lot of rehabilitation involved and the rehab is really important to optimise the recovery. There are a few things to bear in mind in a way of preparing yourself for, for going home. For the first two weeks, I needed support 24-7. Not that I needed people doing things for me, but I didn't want to be in the house on my own because it f I, felt, I felt vulnerable. But that was okay because after those two weeks, I already felt stronger, I could handle crutches better, I could get out and about, and, um, and it wasn't that bad. The first weeks after surgery will be an adjustment to getting used to walking partial weight bearing. That will involve only putting 20 kilos through your operated hip. It's a slow process and you need to listen to your body. Taking regular pain medication can help you adjust to that. Exercise in water is particularly useful because it allows you to exercise partial weight bearing without actually having to use crutches because your body is already floating. It's therefore a way of being able to practice your walking normally and to be able to exercise in a much less painful environment. We will teach you the exercise in the hospital and we expect you to carry on with those at home. We'll also refer you to a physiotherapist as an outpatient to then progress those exercises. So we now need to practice getting one leg to go past the crutches. So we're going to bring the crutches in front again, maybe not quite so far forwards, brilliant. We're going to step forwards just beyond the crutches with one leg and then bring the other leg forwards and through. The recovery of PAO may seem long, but it's very gradual and there's some very important stages. For example, after the first two months, um, after I dropped one crutch and was back on, knee on one. I felt that I could do most things and I returned to work at that point. Return to work we would normally recommend any time after eight weeks. It may often be 10 or 12 weeks and we usually allow patients to return to impact type exercise at about five months after the surgery. Now that's not completely the end of the recovery. Patients do feel niggles around the pelvic region and the hip until the bone has finished remodeling. And that process can go on for many months, even up to a year after the surgery. There's no particular amount of weight, but just till you feel comfortable. A lot of the advice I'm giving is also, but not only based as a physiotherapist, but also based as a patient who underwent this surgery nine months ago. I would recommend particularly the hydrotherapy because I found this invaluable in terms of my return to exercise. I think I underestimated how long my bones may take to heal and that impacted on the speed of my return to all my normal activities and going back to work. I am back to work now. I'm back in my uniform and uh, helping patients uh, recover from this surgery which we treat in our hospital. Having the PAO completely, uh, literally completely changed my quality of life. And it took obviously a while to recover after, but now I live a completely normal life. We go hiking, I go cycling and skiing. Those few months spent recovering are really not much compared to all these years that I have of a normal life.